Hello, people. Okay, we're doing geometric sequences now. Uh, I don't think we've spoken about them before, but I'm sure you've seen them in the past. Um, uh, so I am going to go through some of the, uh, the problems from the worksheet again. And so you can copy down those answers and that work, and then uh, you just do the problems that I did not do. Uh, let's get started. There's your dad joke for the day. Uh, I don't know why it's not going. There we go. Okay. So uh, the first thing is understanding what geometric a uh, geometric sequence is. Okay, so arithmetic was just a, a linear uh, function. Yeah, it was. Remember, it was a n equals a one plus d and then n minus one, right? Okay, so what that basically is is y equals m x plus b, right? It's the same type of formula. So it was just a line. A geometric sequence is uh, it changes by a ratio. Okay, so instead of a common difference like we had with arithmetic, we're going to have a ratio. So like if you look at this, uh, it's not changing by a certain amount every time. Like it, it's not changing by in the last one, we did like changing by 7 or changing by 5. This one like it adds 3 and then it adds 6 and then it adds, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm drawing a blank, 28. Um, what, what it is is it's changing by a ratio. So every time you're multiplying by a certain number, right? Three. You multiply by three. Here you multiply by three. In order to figure that ratio out, it's pretty easy. All you do is you take, you can start anywhere you want, but you're just doing one term divided by the previous term. And that'll give you your ratio. And see, you could you could have started anywhere. If you would have started there, negative nine divided by its previous term, negative three, also gives you the ratio three. So here, that's that's how you figure out the ratio. And if you're going to find, like on this one, it says find the common ratio, which I already did. That was the common ratio. We usually uh, label it R. So I found the common ratio. It says find the eighth term and the explicit formula. Okay, like before. I don't know why they're asking to do this before that. You would want to find the explicit formula first. Okay, so let's uh, let's start here. Let's start by finding the explicit. Sorry, I can't erase that. I misspelled explicit. Okay, um, uh, so in order to find the explicit formula, it's going to be like a n, kind of similar to how we did it before, and then we're going to have our starting point, okay, so like our, our first term, uh, times the ratio raised to the n minus 1, okay, and you know why it's n minus 1, because we want to make sure that when you plug n equals 1 in, it gives you the first term, okay, so if you plug in 1 here, it gives you 0, r to the 0 gives you 1, and it just ends up with being the first term. Okay, so let's do this one right here. Let's figure this explicit formula out for this one. Okay, so it's going to be the first term. So I'm going to have a n equals the first term is negative 1 times the ratio, which we figured out was 3, raised to the n minus 1. And you can put that n minus 1 inside or outside of the parentheses. It doesn't really matter. n minus 1. Okay, and uh, there's my explicit formula. Um, let's just prove that it works real quick since it's the first one we've done. Let's say we want to find the third term. The third term is negative 9. So a sub 3 is equal to negative 1, 3 raised to the 3 minus 1, which is 2, right? So we have negative 1 to 3 squared. That would be 9 times negative 1 would give you negative 9. And that gives you the third term, okay? So if it wants to know the eighth term, because it says that's the... Uh, the thing we need to find. So right now we found the common ratio and the explicit formula. Let's find the eighth term and then we're done. So we're going to do a sub 8 equals negative 1, 3 raised to the 8 minus 1. That's going to be negative 1, 3 raised to the 7th. And I don't know what 3 raised to the 7th power is. Let's do it real quick in the calculator. It is 2,187, so this comes out to negative 2,187. And that'll be the eighth term. Okay, so I did the uh, three thing it's asking for for that one. So you would do that for every single one of these. Now notice it's also asking determine if it is a geometric sequence. I will tell you one of these four is not a geometric sequence, okay? It doesn't change by a ratio. It changes by some other, some other thing. So you're going to find one of them as not being geometric, and then you don't do any of those three things for it. You just write not geometric, and you just find those three things for the ones that are geometric. Okay, so let's do 
a couple problems from the next one and uh, see uh, see how to do it here. So given the explicit formula for the geometric se sequence, find the common ratio, the term named in the problem, so like a to the 11th, and the recursive formula. Okay, so you know how to do the recursive formula. Remember, the recursive formula is you have to know the previous term in order to get the, uh, the next term. Okay, so let's start off with uh, find the common ratio. That seems like it'll be real easy because we have this formula. Remember, this is how we started out. I told you it's, that's supposed to be an r raised to the n minus 1, okay? So our common ratio is going to be the thing being raised to the n minus 1. So our ratio is a 1 half. Okay, so we already did find the common ratio. Find the term named in the problem. Okay, so we want a to the 11. So a to the 11 equals negative 3, a half, raised to the 11 minus 1. So we're going to have a negative 3 raised to the half, raised to the 10th power. Okay, so I'm just going to type that bad boy into the calculator here. Negative 3 times 1 half, raised to the 10th power. And that would give us... An answer of negative 3 over 1024. And there's the 11th one. So find the common ratio we did. We found the name, uh, we found the term named, and then it says find the recursive formula. Okay, so to find the recursive formula, what we're gonna end up doing is it's gonna be like the same thing as we did before. It'll be a to the n equals, we're gonna have to start out with the with the previous term, right? So I need to multiply by that. And then you're just gonna be multiplying by the ratio that you have given. So uh, let's let's start out with, and then remember you always have to give the first term. So in this case, our first term, you would need to plug in to figure out what it is. I mean, if you don't see it already, but if you want the first term, it would be a one. So let's see here, negative three raised to the half, raised to the one minus one is zero, right? Anything raised to the zero is just one. So that cancels out. So our first term is negative 3. So that is the recursive formula. Oh, I, I didn't plug in what r is. r is a half, right? OK, so let's just check if this works real quick. So like, let's say I want uh, the second term. OK, so here, let's figure out what the second term is using this formula so I can prove that my recursive formula is correct. So let's say I Let's figure out what the second term is. So it'd be negative three raised to the half, I mean half times half raised to the two minus one, which is one. So that'll leave me with a half, which is gonna be negative three over two, yeah? Okay, so there's what my second term is. Now let's do it with the recursive and just make sure that it worked, okay? Make sure that it's, it's giving me the answers I want. So it's gonna be the previous term. So if I want a sub two, I'm gonna need to know a sub one I'm going to multiply by the common ratio, which is a half. So my first term is negative 3. I'm going to multiply by my common ratio, which is a half, and that's going to give me negative 3 over 2, which is what I figured out with the explicit, and the recursive is giving me the same thing. So that's how you figure that out. Yeah. So if you want the recursive, it's just a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times your common ratio. Okay. So that's how you find recursive formulas for geometric sequences. Okay, let's go forward. Okay, given two terms in a geometric sequence, so they give us uh, the fourth one and the first one in this one, uh, find the common ratio, the explicit formula, and the recursive formula. Okay, let me get my pen. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do before you do any of these is find the common ratio because you're going to need the common ratio for the explicit formula and the recursive. There's no way getting around that, yeah? Okay, remember, uh, if they give you um, uh, terms that are right after one another, like this one, it went from the fifth term to the fourth term. They gave us the terms that are right after each other. That's very easy. You just divide them and you'll get your common ratio, yeah? Uh, here, they're skipping some. So like, let's give you an idea what they're doing here. They're starting with two. There's the second term, the third term, and the fourth term. And we're having to figure out what the common ratio is here, but we don't know those middle ones, okay? So uh, how are we gonna go about doing that? Well, with the, uh, with the arithmetic ones, what you did was you subtracted them and you divided by how many terms it, it had skipped, right? Uh, with this one, uh, let's do it a little differently. Let's, uh, let's use our formula we had. Uh, I'm trying to think of how I want to solve this. Um, okay, so let's start out with a sub n equals a sub 1 
times the ratio raised to the n minus 1, yeah? Okay, well, I know a sub 1. I know a sub 4. So I can just plug in all these numbers. I think this is going to be the best route about going. A sub 1 is 2. The ratio I don't know. And n, well, it was the fourth term, right? So it would be 4 minus 1, which is 3. Okay, now all I need to do is solve for r. So uh, let's divide by 2. Okay, that looks like sandwich method. So negative 1 times 1 is my new numerator. My denominator will be 4 times 2 is equal to r cubed. And we can just cube root. So cube root. Okay, so our common ratio would be uh, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, and the cube root of 8 is 2. And there's our common ratio. Sweet. Now this one would have been a lot easier. You just do the this term divided by that term, right? Because they're one after another. They don't they don't have like things in between. They're missing. So uh, that one's a lot easier than this one to find the common ratio. Okay, now to find the explicit. Okay, so it will be a sub n equals. Okay, our first term, which was a uh, two, our common ratio negative one over two, raised to the n minus one. There we go. We're done with the explicit. Now the recursive. Um, okay, so this one is a sub n, and it's going to be equal to the previous term times the ratio, which the ratio is negative one half. And you need to tell it where it started, our first term there. a sub one is two. There you go. So you got your recursive and your explicit. I kind of accidentally erased the one there when I did that. Okay. There you go. Okay, and uh, you guys are left with uh, number eight. Okay, let's go forward. Okay, uh, this one looks drastically similar to the previous one. Here, I will just do this real quick. Find the missing term or terms in each geometric sequence. Okay, um, well, I guess finding the ratio will be the easiest and then just working backwards or forwards, however you want to work. Um, and you would find the ratio by doing exactly what I did on the last one, yeah? Let's say, let's act like it's like this. A sub n, we'll call this a to the fourth. Yeah, we'll say this is the fourth term, and we'll say this is the first term. Okay, so the fourth term is going to be 108 equals 4. The ratio I need, 4 minus 1 is 3. It looks like we're going to be doing the same thing. 108 divided by 4 be like, uh, I think it's like 27. Let's see. 108 divided by 4, 27, equals r cubed. We cube root, right? And the cube root of 27, that's 3, 3, cube. yeah, 3. So our ratio is 3. So uh, if we need to figure out the missing terms. Just multiply this by 3. So 4 times 3 would be 12. Then 12 times 3 would be 36. And then 36 times 3 would be 108. There we go. And we filled in those terms. It didn't ask us to find the explicit formula or anything. So that's how we do that one. And uh, just finish up the other ones. And enjoy the rest of the week. It's Remember, it's two lessons per week. You just did the two. Next week, you'll have another two. They will be about sequences as well. Uh, one of them will probably be combining arithmetic and geometric, and then I'll probably introduce a new set of sequences, okay? So you get an idea. See ya.